He's just passionate, you know? When he gets mad and calls me names, it's because he cares too much. It's not like he means those things. We're just both really intense. That's normal in relationships, right? Yeah, she's tough on me. She criticizes a lot. But that's just her pushing me to be better. It's for my own good, right? Show she cares. He's got a strong personality. I knew that going in. When he makes all the decisions, it's not because he's controlling. It's because he's better at planning than I am. I should be grateful I don't have to worry about that stuff. She's just really into social media. Loves the attention. So what if she flirts a bit online? Doesn't mean anything. It's just her being friendly. I can't be the guy who's insecure about that stuff. Denial. That's your first roadblock to overcome if you ever hope to leave a relationship with a narcissist. Denial is so comfortable. It's so much easier to just refuse to believe you are being abused because the truth is just too painful. Because how does one start processing that someone you love could cause you so much pain? There are seven more obstacles to starting your journey to freedom from narcissistic abuse. And one of them is so insidious. It's often the main reason why so many people never leave their abusers. Since you are watching this video, my guess would be maybe you're fed up with feeling stuck and lied to. I'm here to show you how you can overcome the obstacles to get out of this relationship. You're not alone in this. Everyone is sick of the mind games and manipulation. You're here for answers, and that's exactly what you're going to get. This is about breaking free, reclaiming your life. So, let's get started. Shame is another obstacle. That's one powerful detractor. You might be feeling like everything's your fault, or you might be scared of what people might say. For men out there, this part is the toughest because they've been generally conditioned to believe that seeking help is a sign of failure. It goes against the grain of what they've been taught about being a real man. So, they stay silent, fearing judgment. Whether you are a man or a woman, feeling ashamed of being in your situation is a tough, limiting emotion. So, how do you overcome it? First step is understanding that you are not defined by what you've endured. Once you educate yourself about narcissistic abuse and learn the mechanics of manipulation, you will learn to detach your sense of self from the abuse. Learn how to set boundaries with yourself. What I mean by that is, you need to learn to control your internal dialogue. NLP techniques are extremely helpful in this process. I have a video about this. There will be a link at the end of this video. Realize that strength is not enduring pain in silence, but in recognizing when to seek help but don't limit it to your friends and family, because no matter how well-meaning, their advice will be driven by opinions they had formed based on their own life experience, which by definition is subjective at best, and it may not be very helpful and sometimes counterproductive. By contrast, a professional therapist will offer a, a more objective perspective. The third obstacle you might be facing is fear of retaliation. This can be quite paralyzing. Narcissistic abusers often wield power through intimidation and threats. They've shown they'll do whatever it takes to keep you in line, making breaking free feel impossible. Here's what to do. First up, make a game plan for staying safe. Think of places you can stay if things get tough. People you can call if you feel you're in danger. Make sure you got your important documents and essentials packed and ready to go fast. Next, write down every time they threaten you or do something scary. This list is super important if you need to get the law involved or if you're thinking about a restraining order. Get a secret phone they don't know about and stash it somewhere safe. Also, change all your passwords so they can't snoop on your other devices. Talk to a lawyer who knows the ins and outs of domestic abuse. They can tell you all about your rights and how to protect yourself, including getting a restraining order if you need one. If things get really scary, don't think twice about calling the cops. Having a record of what's been going on can really help you out later on in court. Keep your escape plan on the down low from the person hurting you and anyone who might spill the beans. Being able to leave when they least expect it can make a huge difference in getting out safely. Next hurdle is emotional dependency. They've groomed you to think you need them, that you're nothing without their approval. They've eroded your independence and self-esteem, so you might come to believe you cannot function or be happy without them. What can you do to overcome this? First off, that sticky feeling of needing them all the time? Yeah, that was no accident. Abusers played mind games to knock down your confidence, but here's how you start picking those pieces back up. Jot down all the cool stuff about you, your strong points, the big wins you've had. What makes you? Well, you. Now let's talk about getting your independence back. Start with baby steps, like making choices based on what you like and want. It could be as simple as deciding what you're going to have for lunch. The next obstacle is being financially dependent on your abuser. 
For example, you might be in a situation where you're a stay-at-home mom and he's the only breadwinner or you have some part-time income and you think you won't be able to make it on your own. Thinking about this hurdle is so overwhelming that you simply choose to stay and you feel trapped and powerless. So how do you solve this? Start by understanding what you have, what you owe, and what you need. Create a budget. Start looking for a job which might match your skill set or start working on learning new, more marketable skills. Access community resources. There is help out there. Food banks, career counseling, and financial aid for education could be available to you. If you haven't already, open a bank account in your name only. Begin saving any money you can. Make sure you get proper legal advice. Some organizations provide free or low-cost services for those in financial need. Breaking your journey into smaller steps can make the task less daunting and give you a sense of progress. Remind yourself daily of your right to a secure, independent life. Your next obstacle might be that you're afraid to lose friends and family if you leave. That is because narcissists are very good at turning even the closest friends' family against you. Whoever's in your corner can be flipped to theirs with a few well-placed lies. Once they do this, you're left feeling more isolated and worthless than ever. It's a tactic designed to trap you, making the mere thought of walking away impossible. Here's some practical advice. First, keep a record of interactions that highlight their behavior. This can be useful if you need to explain the situation to friends, family, or legal professionals. Reach out to your closest friends and family members. Share your experiences and feelings with them before your abuser gets to them. A therapist or counselor can not only offer you emotional support, but also guide you on how to communicate effectively with those around you about your situation. If you're concerned about the narcissist turning your current support network against you, start building a new one. Support groups, online communities, and even new friendships can offer you a safety net. Concentrate your energy on relationships with people who believe and support you. It's quality, not quantity, that counts. Except that you might lose some relationships. It's painful, but focusing on those who do support you is vital for your recovery. Remind yourself why leaving is necessary for your well-being. The loss of certain relationships, while painful, is not worth the cost of staying in an abusive situation. Be mindful of what you share and with whom. Protecting your privacy can prevent the narcissist from using shared information against you. 7. Self-doubt. This is a huge roadblock because it shakes your confidence in making choices and even trusting how you feel. Reach out to someone you trust and who will understand what you're going through. Just talking it out can remind you that you're not alone and help clear your head. Keep a journal where you jot down all the times you made decisions that turned out well. Seeing it on paper is an effective reminder of how capable you are. Remind yourself that you are worth so much more than how you're being treated. Say this to yourself every day, even if you have to stick post-it notes all over your mirror. And finally, the most insidious obstacle. But first, if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And now, obstacle eight, trauma bonding. A trauma bonding is a strong psychological connection you form with your abusive partner. This is how a narcissist creates trauma bonding. It all starts with love bombing. If you've been in a narcissistic relationship, you are very familiar with this phase. Life feels magical when they are showering you with love and attention. But then, the cycle of abuse begins. And once charming and romantic, they turn on you and start criticizing, gaslighting, and otherwise emotionally manipulating you. And then they go back to romance and charm, and you feel this hope that maybe they change and maybe they will stay kind and loving. This hope helps you rationalize and endure their abuse. This dynamic is particularly damaging because it not only erodes your self-esteem and sense of autonomy, but also distorts your understanding of love, healthy relationships, making leaving very hard. When you are in this relationship, you experience cognitive dissonance. The same person who showers you with love can hurt you deeply next day. So, the love you feel for them is both painful and dangerous, and the only way this will stop is when you leave. So how do you break this bond? Once you understand how a narcissist operates, you will realize that you are not to blame for any of their actions. Talking to friends, family, or joining groups can make you feel supported and less alone. Finding a good therapist who is deeply knowledgeable about narcissistic relationships is extremely important. Make sure you establish very strict boundaries with your abuser. And finally, take care of you. Focus on things that make you feel good and strong. Remember, leaving a situation like this takes time and a lot of self-love. 
Leaving a trauma bond is not about finding something new within you. It's about returning to who you were before the manipulation and hurt took hold. Yes, it's a tough journey, but your prize at the end of it is a possibility of a healthy, unconditional love with someone new.